welcome back to Flying Strike Exotics. I'm John, and today I want to talk about what size snakes do I keep in uh, each type of rack. I just posted on Instagram yesterday that I just got this new uh, ARS 5540. Well, it's a 4044 because I added another level up top. Um, by the way, ARS right now, I purchased this less than two weeks ago and it already got shipped and delivered. So their lead times are fantastic as it is. So if you need a professional rack, right now ARS is the way to go. Two weeks, I ordered this thing and it's here and I already have a built. Um, but an Instagram follower uh, asked me, hey, is this a 5510 over here and do you keep hatchlings in it? Um, which is a fantastic question and if you guys have questions like that um, you know as I'm going through my Instagram or YouTube videos Instagram posts and a lot of uh, you know the topics that I use for YouTube are from questions that you guys ask that you guys ask that you guys ask and today I want to talk about just that um, he asked if if I throw my hatchlings in here and if they're okay in there without a um, hide or anything Basically, long story short, I have three types of racks and I only use three types of racks. This is the 10 series from uh, ARS. These are the 40 se or 55 series from ARS, and that's the 70 series from ARS. Basically, as soon as a snake hatches, it goes in here and I actually still have snakes in there that are about a year old. Um, which I am move the reason I bought this extra rack here is so I can start moving them over to this at about a year old, you know, five, uh, probably 700 grams or so. I moved them up to here. The 55 series racks basically hold everything up to maybe 2,500 grams or so. The 70 is basically for the biggest snakes in my ball python collection. So. Um, you know, I have, let's see here, this is the uh, 10 series, you know, I have my lightning pods in here. As you can see, it's a very basic setup. You don't need a bunch of stuff in here. There's a water dish, there's a piece of paper, and there's a snake. You do not need a hide in here. I have not had an issue hatching out, um, taking care of and growing out these babies here. This little girl here is getting shipped out today. She's a couple months old. Um, these, let's see. Here we go, here's a little dude. He's one of the grow outs from my first. He's about 200 grams and as you can see, he, you know, still fits in there extremely well. Um, you know, he's probably in the 200 gram range at this point, um, but you know, they're feeding without any issues. Um, these snakes up here, all the hold decks from last season, or the these two are the two that I bought last year. Um, these... Uh, these girls, she's in shed. And as you can see, here, I'll pull this out. So this is, again, this is, this is the 10 series here. This is the 10 series tub. And that's how this girl fits in here. Uh, I've had no issues. Th this is a little bigger than I'd like in here. However, um, I wasn't ready to move them up to the 55 series yet because I wanted to make sure that they were <laughs> just eating well. Um, the one thing that I could tell you guys from experience so far, and I've really had hundreds of snakes at this point, whether I've purchased a snake as a hatchling or I've bred it myself. I have not had any issues with those snakes being picky. Anything that I've purchased right out of the egg or bred myself, I've never had an issue with that snake, you know, getting used to my system, my setup, and what I want to feed it. Um, I bought several snakes last year. Um, as hatchlings and obviously my hold back rack it doesn't have a ton of snakes that is five or six that i'm keeping um they all transitioned over to frozen thawed uh, whether or not i bred it or not they have stayed on frozen thawed i haven't had any issues with them going back and forth between different prey types um and they eat weekly um unless maybe they are in shed and even then sometimes a lot of those snakes actually eat in shed 
So my advice in terms of, you know, everybody having issues with snakes transitioning to a new home is try to get them small, try to get them young. That's sort of counterintuitive to what I normally preach, which is you want to try to buy them closer to adulthood so that you can get breeding quicker um, so that you have some money coming back into your uh, business or your collection so that you can reinvest it. The problem with that is the snakes that I've purchased that are older, you know, they're a year old, two years old, three years old. Those are really the ones that I have an issue with, with them feeding regularly or feeding um, at all. There have been snakes that I've purchased that are, well, let's see, um, this girl here, she is a lesser pied combo. She hasn't been a super big problem snake, but she's not eating on a weekly basis, um, kind of on and off here and there, um, you know, kind of just as the as the wind as the wind rolls in uh this girl was i purchased her she was eating well for me for a while um then she decided uh, she was eating rats and then she decided that she only wanted to start taking mice so she was taking mice for a while and now she hasn't been eating for probably the last two months um she was right at breeding size and now she's quickly kind of dipping down below that um again the snake that i purchased let me get my stool and I will show you a couple snakes that I purchased or I grew up that um, are just kind of thriving at this point. This is my pastel leopard Mojave female. Got her as a hatchling a few years back and she eats week in, week out. I have been breeding her so she has been kind of on and off food recently, but um, she has just been crushing food ever since I had her. She didn't have any trouble transitioning from a hatchling tub up to the 55 series here. Um, let's see what else I have in here. Tesla. My dude Tesla. My, my breeder male. Blue Eye Lucy. Um, he's in shed, but he's the same thing. I purchased him as a hatchling a few years back. He has been breeding for me this year. He had all my Blue, Blue Eye Lucy clutches. He transitioned over to the 55 series without any hassle. Now, in the 55 series, when I move the hatchlings um, over to these tubs, I will put a hide in here. And I believe these are Vivarium Electronics I bought from Reptile Basics. I think these are the mediums, maybe. Um, yeah, I think they're the mediums. They fit perfectly, as you can see, uh, along the width of these 55 series tubs and they fit all the way in the back perfectly as well now he's probably about a thousand grams he just kind of fits into that hide there as you're starting to get a little bigger uh, let's try this od female here od pied she's not going to fit in those hides anymore but at that point these females are so big that they don't need hides inside of here anymore so um you're about a thousand grams or so when the medium hides work for you in the 55 series once they start getting up in the to the mid 1000 range like the 1500 range you're probably going to be taking your hides out of these 55 series and then the snake should be okay the tub isn't really too big uh, usually the transition period from here to here from 10 to 55 can be sort of tricky. Um, but I think it's sort of a little easier if you're able to get a, a tub in there or a, a hide in there for them to kind of feel a little more secure. Um, and then let me see, I'm trying to think of some of the bigger females I have in here. Like what the, what the high, what the higher end is. I think, Probably my lightning pied female is probably one of the bigger ones in here. She laid, um, she's a little over 2,000 grams. And she is still in here because I didn't see any reason to move her up yet to the bigger tubs. Now, when you get to the 70 series tubs, these are your absolute biggest females. I would say 2,500 
grams and above is what you're looking at here. This pastel pied is right at 2,500 grams, I believe. Um, you know, she's filling out this tub <laughs> very nicely. Who else do we have in here? This, well, when she laid, uh, this, what was she, Silver Streak. She was 3,500 before she laid last year. Um, she's probably around 3,000 grams at this point. And she, uh, you know, she's <laughs> a really nice plump size in there. We have Princess down here at the bottom. We just had a nice meal and she's, you know, 4,000 grams when she's not, you know, uh, after she doesn't lay eggs. So she fits nice in these tubs as well. I do have a couple snakes that prefer hides in here and I guess these would be the larges. They do fit along the back of the tub like this. Um, I usually like to turn them, although the snakes usually have different ideas for how that works. Now this snake, the pastel and she pied and shed, um, she, I would say is between 2,000 and 2,500 grams. She still fits in these hides perfectly well. Um, and she actually, as you can see, moves it around a lot. So she works well in there. Um, there's some other snakes like this granite pied who is huge and as well over 3,000 grams who obviously would not fit into one of those hides anymore. So it's it's very simple. Uh, you really don't want to think too much about it. It's also going to depend on the snakes you have individually um, in whether or not you bred them or bought them as adults. But let's say for instance that these are all snakes that you purchased as hatchlings or bred them yourself. The 10 series tubs work perfectly well. You do not need hides in it. You do not need any smaller tubs. You can put hides in it if you want. I've never used a hide and I've never had an issue with a snake feeding in it. This probably works up until 700 grams to 1000 grams, which would be kind of snug for the snake. At that point, you're gonna move them up to the 55 ser series. Um, you'll probably want a hide in the back of the tub. Uh, the Vivarium Electronics tubs, the mediums, work in there very well. They'll probably fit in those hides until 1,500-ish grams or so. You can probably take it out at that point. And then you're probably going to leave the snake in there until it's 2,000 grams-ish, maybe 2,500. And then you're moving them up to the 70 series. And some snakes like hides in there, some don't. You could try the large hides from Reptile Basics in there. And then at that point, that's where your ball pythons are staying. Ball pythons, unless you have a Volta that's 8,000 grams or some crazy, they're just gonna live in that 70 series forever. That's all I use. I have, I have the 10 series, the 55 series, and the 70 series. Uh, there's probably no need for anything else or anything more. I wouldn't think too hard about it. Just keep in mind that if you're breeding something and you're hatching it yourself, or you're buying it very young, it's probably going to get used to your system and your rack and the way you do things and the way you feed a little easier than something you're buying when it's older. If they're older and they're accustomed to a certain thing and a certain temperature and a certain humidity and a certain substrate and a certain type of hide and a certain smell to the prey, that's when it gets hard for you as a ball python owner or breeder is it's hard to replicate those things exactly. I've had snakes like, uh, let's see here, this girl here, who had a nice meal yesterday. I got this from Freedom, Freedom Breeder, and actually I got this pasta leopard pied from Freedom Breeder as well. And they were immediately eating. They actually, they were feeding them live and I switched them to Frozen Thawed. They have taken it every single week since then for the last two or three months that I've had them. And I've never had an issue with these snakes feeding. Um, I had purchased, I have some other ones from Freedom Breeder in quarantine that um, haven't taken so well to Frozen Thawed or are being picky with eating. So it can depend on the snake as well. It's, it's very snake dependent, but most of the time if you can get them young, if you're more comfortable not having to deal with picky eaters, it's easier to get them young. 
But if you're experienced, you know, it's not an issue to get them as they're older. So that's it. Uh, thanks for stopping by. And again, comment, you know, if you have questions, ask them. That's where I get a lot of my good ideas from uh, for the videos.